Most people think sound starts with expensive gear, but it actually starts with understanding the speaker itself. The box, the driver, the way it breathes in your room, it all matters. In this video, we're pulling back the curtain on speaker boxes and showing you how the shape, the size, and setup of your speakers can completely transform the way you hear music or movies. Because it's not just about what you buy, it's the design, it's how it's built, and where it lives. My name is Mick Stallone, and I've been in the audio visual industry for close to 30 years. In that time, I've learned a lot about speakers, how they're made, why they're shaped the way they are, and how to position them in the room to get the best sound in the space <laughs> that you are listening in. All of this matters, but what matters the most is understanding this product, the speaker, and how the various speaker designs and technologies can affect the sound you're listening to. Let's get into the important information, and that is understanding what it is you're buying, if you're buying a new speaker, and if you've already got a speaker, how you can possibly get more out of it by thinking about what the speaker is, what drivers it has, how those drivers interact with the box, and how the entire speaker interacts with your room. So around me, you'll notice quite a few different speakers. Start with, I guess, what is the most traditional speaker design. We'll go with the bookshelf. The same applies to a tower. In a traditional box design, if you have a look at it, you'll notice that it's quite hard, sharp edges. And many speakers do have the same hard, sharp edge design. But some speakers have decided to go with either different angles or a curved design, and I'll explain that in a few minutes why it's actually quite important, because what a lot of people don't understand is that the box itself is affecting the sound. It is not just what comes out of the drivers, it's the driver's association with the box and the box within the room. Let me go a little bit further. There is a term called diffraction. Diffraction? I think it's diffraction. Diffraction of sound which essentially is the bending of the frequencies, the bending of sound. Sound waves like to travel in a straight line, but when they encounter an obstacle like the edge of a speaker cabinet, they bend. The bending is called diffraction. High frequency sound produced by the tweeter are more directional, so they're more affected by diffractions. Sharp edges cause strong diffractions. This creates interference where some frequencies are amplified and others are canceled out. Round edges help sound waves bend more smoothly, reducing diffraction and interference. Waveguides are a purpose-built structure that controls how sound leaves the tweeter, minimizing diffraction. The waveguide offers more controlled sound dispersion in rooms, making cabinets with round edges and waveguides a better choice in hard or untreated rooms, where traditional box speakers with sharp edges work best in a well-treated space. Diffracted sound interacts with reflections, further complicating the sound field. Speakers with reduced diffractions provide a cleaner sound, better stereo imaging, leading to more accurate listening experiences. The sound doesn't just come out of the speaker. The sound actually comes out and it interacts with the body and the shape of the actual box itself. And it bends itself around the box. When you're looking at a speaker, you've got to think about the drivers, the box, and how that works within your room. You'll find that these speakers here, what we've noticed is that in a well-treated room, they perform very, very well. But a traditional speaker design, similar to the Bowers and Wilkins, in a living space or a room that is more hard surface orientated, lots of glass, hard floors and tiles, they don't necessarily perform as well. Speaker manufacturers can't know what room you've got. They also don't know what electronics you're gonna use. But some speaker manufacturers take the thought of the box and the design of the box a little bit further. They're thinking more about creating a product that is friendlier in more room environments. Whereas some manufacturers are actually thinking that you're gonna be putting the speaker in a room that's designed for audio. And I'd say that out of all the systems that we design and sell to people, 85% are putting it into a living space, not into a dedicated listening room. The design of the speaker is really important, and this is what you need to think about when you're either looking to buy a new speaker or understanding the speaker you've got and making sure that you have tried everything you can to position it in a way where it actually works within your room. And that's the good thing here. I'm not saying go and chuck out your box speaker because it doesn't suit your room. What I'm saying is understand what it is, how it works, what it's sitting on, 
and how it's coupled to your floor and how it's positioned within your room because everything that you do with these boxes is going to affect the sound that you're experiencing. So let's talk about some cabinet designs are a little bit different. If you look over here at the Fine F1.5, this is a waveguide. You've got your horn tweeter in the mid-range mid-woofer. And what you'll find here is that the mid-range or the mid-woofer is acting as the waveguide for the horn. You'll notice that there are these ridges in the actual driver itself. This all is intentional and it actually is to me providing you with a little bit more room tuning capabilities. What I find with waveguide speakers is that they're actually much friendlier in a bad room. So if I had a room and that room had a lot of hard surfaces and I couldn't get the speaker positioned in the wall, the best for the sound, it had to go where it was because of the looks, then having a speaker that's got a waveguide is gonna work a little bit better in that space. It also has a few other really distinct advantages. So when you look at a waveguide, what a waveguide does for the high frequency, it actually energizes the high frequency. This is better for timing as well. So in a large space, having a speaker that has a waveguide, the waveguide energizes the high frequency and it's allowing that information to keep better time with the other frequencies. It also has a much more consistent dispersion pattern from the low frequencies to the higher frequencies, which is great for seating position. This is why I believe that these are actually a friendlier speaker in most rooms. You have got a much better image in more parts of that room, which is better for sound overall. You can sit on axis, you can sit off axis, and you're gonna get a better listening experience. There's something very interesting about the design of this speaker, and also with the Crix Esoteric speaker, is that there is a slight angle in the face. So I would say that that would be possibly a five degree maybe angle, three to five degree angle. And this is really important because again, when you look at a speaker, it can either project directly across the room or if it's at an angle, it's projected in an upwards angle across the room. Speaking of the angle of a speaker, most speaker stands have got threaded screws and those threaded screws can be used to tilt your speaker. When you're putting a speaker in a room, it isn't just about positioning it within the focus point and creating an equilateral triangle. You've also got the ability with a speaker to actually tilt the speaker up and down. If it's a tall speaker, a big floor mount speaker, you might find that it works better if you raise the back two, three, four degrees and have the speaker slightly angling down towards the listening position, or if you take the speaker and rake it back a little bit and have the sound go upwards across the room. All of this is gonna have an effect on the sound. And this is why I spend so much time in rooms talking about the space and how the speaker works within that space because we don't know what the space is gonna to do to the sound, but we do have the ability with the speaker to adjust it to suit the room. And this is room tuning. And if you've never done this with your speakers, you might be missing out on the secret ingredient that is gonna take a listening experience into an incredibly immersive listening experience. And that's getting you closer to the audio, allowing the speaker to work better in that space. The other thing is porting. Some speakers are front ported, some speakers are rear ported, and some speakers are down ported. The Crick speaker over here is actually back ported, but it's ported at an angle. Any speaker that doesn't have a direct backfiring port, as some of these speakers do, you'll find that they're gonna be a little bit friendlier to position closer to a wall. The wall itself and the proximity from the speaker to that wall doesn't have as much room effect to it. If you've got to get up close to a wall, think about either a front ported speaker or a down ported speaker or back ported but down ported like the Crick speaker. The positioning of a speaker to a wall is really important. Speakers like to breathe and the more air around the speaker, the better it actually interacts with your room. So if you can position your speaker away from a wall, three, four, five, six hundred mils a meter, it's gonna really, really improve the listening experience. It's gonna give you a much, much bigger stage and elevation in audio. If you're putting your speakers on a stand, make sure that those stands are solid. If the stands have spikes, use the spikes. If you're going in a timber floor and you don't wanna damage your floor, then you can get floor protectors or you can go and get some stone tiles like I've done many, many times from your local gardening center, position the speaker on the stone tile. That's gonna really help you stop the 
energy from that speaker going through a timber floor. And this is what I find is a problem with a lot of rooms, especially older rooms, suspended timber floored rooms. The houses today are concrete, but you know we still do a lot of houses, including my house, where we've got part of the house is, is the original and that's all on suspended timber and the rest of the house is new and that's all on concrete. Very, very different sound from one to the other. And what I find with suspended floors, suspended floors really can suck out the bass and the energy out of a speaker. Yeah, they can add a sub to get more bass, but they're still gonna have the same problem in the energy of that subwoofer is gonna be taken by the stability of the floor. So the best thing to do with those environments is to brace the floor as best you can, putting the speaker on a tile and the bigger the tile the better and it's creating a lot more stability and what's happening there is that the energy of the speaker is not being transferred through the floor the energy of the speaker is being sent into the room you feel a lot more of what's going on it's, it's actually a big big improvement so how the speaker is coupled to the floor is something that really needs to be taken seriously if it's on spikes if it's on rubber feet isolation platforms there are all sorts of things you can do but all of this is something that you need to do to get the best out of your speaker and i think that's the problem a lot of people buy speakers they take them home and they set it up but they're leaving 30 percent of the quality behind i think you need to think about the product think about its association in the space and try and extract all the goodness from these speakers because i can guarantee most speakers have a lot more potential than you're getting from them when you buy them. So when you're going out to buy new speakers, give some thought to the box design, the tweeters, whether it does or doesn't have a waveguide, whether it is or isn't reported, if it's reported, front ported, down ported. Think about where you're gonna put the speaker in the room and speak to the consultants about the location, about the environment, about the room, and see what they say about the technology and what might give you an advantage of that speaker in your room. So let me know in the comments what speaker you've got, what technology you're using and how you've positioned it in your room and the changes that you made to get the best out of your speaker. If you like our content, please hit the like button and subscribe for more information on how to make your system as good as it can possibly be in your space. My name is Mick Stallone and it's been my absolute pleasure to share this time with you talking about speakers, box design and room association. Until next time, thank you very much, cheers. Have you ever wondered why speakers are shaped the way they are? It's not just the looks, it's about how sound behaves. So the next time you look at speakers, remember it's not just about the driver, but how also the cabinet shape influences the sound you hear and feel. This is the Fine Audio F502 SP. These are the Bowles and Wilkins 606s, Fine Audio F15, F1.5. This is the Pos speaker, Crix Esoteric Altium, beautiful speaker. Behind here, we've got the JBL Classic L100s, and this is the Revival Atlanta 5s.